Welcome to Hard und Trocken. I'm Volker Reichenberger and I'm going to explain how to install and use R and R Studio. Now, fortunately, it's very straightforward and simple to install R and R Studio. First of all, we're going to install the R software. Open your web browser and point it to rproject.org. There on this page, you will find the software for installation. Um, you have to go to the download section, the CREN, then just pick any of the mirrors or just go to cloud. And now depending on what version you want to install, you're going to the Mac version or the Windows version. If you're installing on Windows, go to the base subdirectory just download the current version of R and install it. The same goes for the Mac. Just download the current version of R and that's that. It's important that you install R first. The next step is we're going to install R Studio. R Studio is what we're actually working with as a front end. Now, here we're just going to the R Studio dot com page um, we're going to the download section and what you want to install here is our studio desktop so that's also a free software and if you go to the download section you'll find different versions just pick whatever you need here either the windows version or the mac version now once you've installed the software you have to open our studio now here on my Mac, if I open our studio, it might look a bit different in your case, maybe the colors are a bit different, but we can arrange all that later. Now, here in our studio, um, there are, as you can see, three sections. Actually, um, later on, we're going to work with four different sections. Now, the most important part here is um, the console at first. Now, here in the console, you can type commands and you will get answers there too. So if you type two plus three here, you'll get five as an answer. You can do other calculations and immediately see the outcome here. We can evaluate more sophisticated expressions here. You can find all the standard operators here plus minus division multiplication. There's a logarithm function. That's the natural logarithm to basis E, um, sine, cosine, and everything else. Now, we're not going to use R as a pocket calculator. First of all, we're going to use some of the programming language features. So that means we can use variables and work with variables. So I can say, I want to assign the value four to a variable called X. Now, maybe you noticed that here in the environment section, X shows up now with its value. I can set another variable to five. So I'll get Y here too. And I can pick another variable, C, which evaluates to 10. Now, I can use those variables. First of all, um, if I just type X in the console, it's going to show me the current um, value of this variable. I can do calculations with variables. So I can say X plus Y, and it's going to calculate four plus five. I can say X times Z. I can say X times Y minus Z and so on. So I can do those basic calculations here. One operation that we haven't seen yet is if I want to calculate the power of a value. So if I want to square X, I'm using this caret sign here. So four squared is 16. Now what R is especially good at is working with data. And uh, in many cases, data means working with vectors. So let's define a simple vector. Now, one simple way to do that is by saying 
x evaluates to c of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now x is a vector with four entries. And as you can see here, these are numerical values, four values, and the values are 1, 2, 3, 4. If you want to look inside a vector, you can use the structure command strx. And this is always going to show you what you can see up there too. We can work with vectors very conveniently. And that's really one strength of R. If I say I'm using another vector, y, which evaluates to 3, 4, 4, 2, and 5. So let's just display x and y again. Now, if I want to add the values of x and y, I don't have to go through the individual elements and do the calculation. I can just say x plus y. What happens is it's adding the elements of those vectors element-wise. So 1 plus 3 equals 4, 2 plus 4 equals 6, 3 plus 2 equals 5, 4 plus 5 equals 9. So we can write an expression like um, vector x plus vector y in a very simple mathematical notation. And we don't have to specify how we do this vector calculation or this vector addition. Now, working with vectors is quite convenient. I can say x squared, and it's going to square all the elements of x. I can say square root of x, and it's going to calculate the square roots of all those elements. I can say x times 5, and it's going to multiply each element with 5. What you see here in this last example, x times 5, here we are doing something which is a vector times a scalar. So vector times scalar is working in R just like you would expect it to. Um, if you say x times 5 and x is in vector, then each element will be multiplied by 5. Actually, we can do something else like x divided by 4. So in that case, it's just going to divide 1, 2, 3, 4 by 4 and um, show the output here. If I don't want to just display the output, I could store it in another variable. So if I say w is x divided by 4, then it's working like this. It doesn't show me the output in that case. But if I want to look inside w, I can do that by just typing w. Or I can look here up there in the environment section. Now, let's take a look at a more complicated expression. Let's say we want to calculate the standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation looks like this. And we have to find out how to write down this expression in R. And as we're going to see, it's quite straightforward to do that. Let's start at the inner part of this expression. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to subtract the mean of the values in the vector x from each xi. So let's write down x. So let's say our vector x is 3, 6, 4, and 5. How can I subtract the mean from all of those elements? Well, first of all, I have to calculate the mean. Now, let's say putting this into a new variable. Now, mean is the sum of all the elements of x divided by the number of elements in x. Now, the sum of a vector is calculated by sum x. And the length of a vector is just length. So if I do that, mean is the sum of all the elements of x divided by the length then I'm getting just what I want here. Now, just to see what, what happened here, the sum of x is just the sum of the elements in x. Length of x is 4 because we have 4 elements. So mean is 4.5. Now, let's subtract the mean from each individual element. This can be done by just writing x minus 
mean. Now this is subtracting 4.5 from all the elements of x. So we have the first step. Now in the second step of the, for calculating the standard deviation, we have to square all those elements. This is done by taking this expression, putting brackets around it, and then just squaring everything. So now I'm taking all those values and I'm squaring each of those values. So we have the second step in the calculation of the standard deviation. The next step is we have to calculate the sum of all those elements. Well, we already know how to do that. This is done by calculating the sum. Now, I don't want to type everything here. So what I'm doing now is I'm using the up and down keys. Now, using the up and down keys, you can go back to all the commands you've used before. So I'm getting the last command and I'm just edi editing it. I'm putting sum around it. So this is the sum of those four elements. Okay, so we've done almost everything now. The next step is we have to divide this sum by the number of elements minus one. So I'm dividing by length of x minus one. Note that I'm putting brackets around it here. So I'm dividing by three, so 1.666. And finally, I have to calculate the square root of everything here. And now it's quite convenient that I can get back to the last command by using the up and down keys on your keyboard. So here I have just have to say square root. And finally, I calculated the standard deviation of this vector x. Now, actually, R is a statistical software, so you don't have to do that each time. There's a command called SD for standard deviation, and if you use that, it's going to do that calculation for you. But this was really just to show you how each step here is working. A bit more about using R. You can use R for data analysis and explorative data analysis, so you can plot data. There are a couple of very simple plotting commands. So again, if we have a vector x, and now let's put some random values in here. Now, if I want to plot those values, I can just say plot x, and it's going to give me a very simple plot of those values. Maybe I'd like to use a bar plot for that. So the way to do that is using this bar plot command, and then I'm getting a bar plot of all those values. Of course, there are many different commands that you can use for plotting. We're going to explain the details of plotting another time. Maybe I'd like to change the look of this plot here. So how can I do that? You can get help on all the commands in R by typing a question mark and then the command that you're interested in. This will give you help on the command here in the help section. Be warned, the help is not very helpful if you're a beginner. It does specify all the details of how to use that command, but typically the examples that are used there are not very simple to understand and the information you get there is actually quite overwhelming. The information for the standard deviation, for example, is, is quite simple, but my recommendation is if you want to know how a command works, just Google it. Just go to Google, write down what you want. So let's say you want to change color in bar plot and don't forget R. This will give you a lot of different pages which are going to tell you how to do exactly what you want to do now. R is used by so many people that there is a large probability that somebody had the same problem that you had before and that you're going to find a simple answer if you just Google for it. One more important thing about R, much of the functionality that is useful with R is hidden in libraries. And um, it's very simple to install those libraries. If you just go to tools and then say 
install packages. This is going to install those packages or libraries. So if you just go there and then type some package, for example, there's an important one called ggplot. If you just do that and then install, it's going to install exactly that package and that's that.